Oh, boo. Hi, this is Joey Pants. I was Cypher in the Matrix. Hey, this is Michael Popper, AKA the Kid. This is Captain Soren of the Vigilant. This is Andrew Lewis Caldwell, AKA Jude from Matrix Resurrections. Welcome to the bottom of the rabbit hole. Welcome to the bottom of the rabbit hole. And welcome to the bottom of the rabbit hole. Hey, all you little batteries out there. Gina Torres here and welcome to the bottom of the rabbit hole. Welcome to Neo Matrix Online. This is the place to save the Matrix. That's right. That's right. That's right. We are live with Joey Pants. <laughs> Welcome to the bottom of the rabbit hole. Um, I don't know. We might be having a technical difficulty here. If anybody's on IG, um, I'm trying to see if the IG is actually streaming. This is why I can't stand uh, FB or whatever you want to call the parent there. Because they always doing extra stuff like this extra step to broadcast to them. Everybody else is one button go live. They got to make you jump through hoops. Like, come on. So if anybody in the chat can tell me if we're live on Instagram, that would be great. Um, but yeah, uh, Vesuvius and Scion, please say hello to the class while I try to get this figured out over here. Welcome back, class. Hasn't been too long, but we are back and we got some more stuff to talk about tonight. What a time to be plugged in. The Waitrix is over and there's nothing but news ahead. For the Matrix Five. Hey, Randy, are you on IG? Can you see if we're live on IG, Randy? I mean, this is totally a freestyle session. Um, you know, shout out to everybody who's here. Randy's here. Matrix Son is here. Kavion. I don't think we're live yet. AKA Neo greetings um, back in session, but not live on IG because IG is the master of social media foolishness. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm going to give it quite yet. Uh, edit. There we go. Let's try this again. Yeah, I don't know. I'm guessing we just don't have Instagram tonight because I don't really feel like fighting with it. Um, and it says I can edit here, but I don't see it letting me edit here. So I don't know. So anywho, yeah, he says we're not on IG. So I guess IG is going to have to take an L tonight. Um, and that's going to have to be what it is. Uh, Kavion, I did see the solar eclipse, that uh, picture that I posted of the Morpheus quote, quoting the dark storm. Actually, uh, if I can <laughs> come up with it here, I might share it on the screen since you mentioned it. Um, but yeah, that was uh, actually right. That picture is probably on my computer somewhere. But yeah, that was definitely um, a picture I took in real time of the eclipse. So um, that happened. Were you able to see it, either of you guys, V or Sion? Did you see the eclipse yeah. in real time? Yeah, I, I was able to see it. Um, I didn't sit and watch the whole time. I was kind of in and out. And uh, it was cooler than I expected. I, I thought it was going to be, you know, just, uh, oh, it's going to get dark. And then it's going to go like, no, it's actually really cool. There's a lot of good positive energy around it and my curiosity got the best of me so i went out and and checked it out and i'm glad that i did it was just like operation dark storm here the day of the eclipse so i, I was gonna say you had you had a good view right uh, uh, only on the web oh no uh I thought, overcast I... is it overcast rainy uh... day day from yeah, bro no that's dark 
it was definitely raining here, but I brought out the zoom lens and when the clouds broke. So I didn't see like when, when it was fully um, eclipsed or whatever, but um, hold on, let me show you guys on the screen. So this picture, if you see it on my social media, this was taken from the eclipse like in real time. And then I had like a Morpheus quote of him describing, you know, he didn't know who struck first, but <laughs> it was us that scorched the sky. Uh, but yeah, it was cool. Cause like, if you see here, like, you know, I've got shots where it like completely whited out the camera. You know what I'm saying? Like when it got bright, it would like flash. It was crazy. It was like, it was very obvious that that was the part that you weren't supposed to look at with the naked eye. <laughs> um, but yeah, that part was kind of intense. Um, yeah, it's looking like we're gonna have to give on IG being corny. Uh, shout out to Nathan Berger. Um, yeah, no, um, you know, X and YouTube are cooperating as YouTube. Um, and there is an outlier, but again, we don't really have anything crazy, crazy to update you guys with. We just wanted to kind of clear the air, I guess, on, you know, some rumors and just, um, right. Sign, you want to go ahead and jump in there? Um, you had some stuff you wanted to clear up from last time you were digging into the village roadshow stuff and you kind of like put the puzzle pieces together, right? Yes, uh, last live stream, I was talking shit about the suits. You know me, pencil neck, pod grown, no love for the machines. So big evil corporation, WB, with their wavy, sinister looking logo. I thought for sure they'd done for Village Roadshow pictures and their secret arbitration. Maybe even part of a nefarious plan releasing The Matrix 4 Resurrections on HBO Max streaming service at no additional charge. At the same time, they uh, released it in the theaters, thus gutting the theater revenues for Village Roadshow Pictures, which that corporation would need to pay back the front money that Warner Brothers put up to make the film. But uh, getting cynical in my old age, spend too much time plugged in, got addicted to the shit the Matrix pumps into my brain. It's hard to let go. Turns out that if I had just gone to the wiki, it's a source I generally don't go to first because it may be unreliable. Uh, after the live stream, I went to the wiki for Village Roadshow Pictures, and uh, one of my alter egotists is going to put the a link uh, in the YouTube chat. I should probably switch over to the Scion account, shouldn't I? Click, double click. So over on the link, you will find down near the bottom that the Village Roadshow Pictures uh, was in co-production with Heyday Films and the Roll Doll Story Company and of course Warner Brothers Pictures to distribute Wonka back in December and a lot of future projects, most of them sequels or franchise tie-ins. Uh, Furiosa and Mad Max Saga, release date at the end of May of this year in co-production with Domain Entertainment and Kennedy Miller Mitchell. Um, all the sequels and franchise spin-offs, Ready Player Two, San Andreas Two, Sherlock Holmes Three, and I Am Legend 2, all with release dates to be announced in co-production with various corporations. And also The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon and Training Day, Day of the Riot are uh, in production. Uh, Warner Brothers Discovery, Village Roadshow Pictures, and other production studios. Uh, it, since a lot of these are franchise spin-offs like Furiosa Mad Max Saga or sequels like Ready Player 2, San Andreas 2, Sherlock's Home 3, I Am Legend 2, that bodes well that Warner Brothers and Bill Roadshow will cooperate and give us a high-budget uh, Matrix 5 film in the near future. 
Yeah, I thought um, when you mentioned um, the Ready Player Two, you know, in the pre-show, uh, I think that actually has some Matrix-flavored implications there because um, not too long ago, I want to say a couple months ago, um, you know, they were posting on X something about uh, investing in the Ready Player One metaverse uh, construction which you know i was very skeptical of um in terms of the approach but um yeah the fact that you know village roadshow was listed to be in on that through your research i think that says uh, a lot about uh where things could go here and 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 for the record i mean this is why we're doing this right because you know right you asked what was up with the thumbnail why why was there a, a t800 and a cocaine bear um now I didn't blood test the bear. I don't know if it was doing any drugs, but uh, the point of the thumbnail is that it was sleeping, and you know, along comes some Cyberdyne hardware to poke it. So you can take that subtext however you'd like. Um, but in the meantime, between time, uh, yeah, the reason why I picked that thumbnail um, is because yeah, you know, there's a. Uh, uh it, it seemed like uh you know there was not really anything going on in the matrix universe that things were just very dormant and very quiet and, you know uh, all of a sudden the grizzly bear seems to have awakened um now we don't really know what that means as far as details quite yet um but right with the ready player one thing um you know um we hadn't heard anything about the uh, the matrix nfts in a while you know that situation got real quiet there so um i did low-key tag some folks on x about that um, but yeah uh you know if they were going to choose the path of doing the right thing right uh, I would say that if you're going to go ahead and put money on Ready Player 2 and the Ready Player 1 metaverse, the right thing to do would be give, at the very least, NFT owners early access. Um, but that's like a bare minimum. I mean, I could go way further down that rabbit hole, but um, I want to stick to Matrix Matrix 5. Um, at least for now um because like i said there were some um you know questions that i guess frequently asked questions that i kept getting here um over the past week oh right and um i don't know if i said it. i do believe that ig is working now you guys can let me know if that's happening but i think we got that worked out while cyan was explaining stuff there um randy says if this is a proper sequel a true m5 i want to know if neo and trinity will still be a big part or will they be side important characters so based on what i'm seeing um you know again all we really have is the announcement like anything else i've seen since then has been from not reliable sources and at this point you know what i'm saying like i've been doing this right i mean i guess what resurrections came out in 2021 so yeah there was a little bit of a hiatus there but the point being in the five years that i've been looking at these outlets these you know internet blogs or whatever you want to call it you know certain dudes or certain outlets or certain publications when they say stuff 80 90 percent of the time it happens and then there's other cats when they say stuff 80 90 percent of the time it doesn't happen <laughs> so if somebody's saying something and they come from that 80 90 percent of sources that never pans out or only pans out once every 10 times no i'm not reporting that i'm gonna wait until a reliable source or somebody corroborates it and the crazy part is one of those 10 times last time around when resurrections was hyping up one time one of those suspect sketchy sources posted something now again I chased it because there was, you know, they posted the link. And when I went to the source, because you know how I do, that was the corroborating evidence, right? Because now not just the outlet, but they're giving up their source. So now when I'm looking at the source, the source is saying the same thing that said in the article. And long story short, that source 
I tracked down where they got their um, audio from. And that's how I found um, the Jude audition leaks. You know, for anybody who's been here for the entire Resurrections run, I actually leaked. Um, now, um, you know, Andrew Lewis Caldwell's audition wasn't in the leak. It was, you know, three random actors from whatever service that was a casting agency. But that's what it was. It was like the casting agency had posted like the actors that they sent for the audition. Um, and that was clearly a mistake because, you know, it was still Project Ice Cream then. Like, you know, somebody boo-booed. You know, it would not surprise me if somebody over there lost their job. But, you know, and I don't wish that on anybody. But, yeah, somebody fumbled. Um, and I was there to scoop up the loose ball. Um, and that was interesting because like I said, that was a source that I wouldn't normally trust, but I even said, I'm like, you know, in the video, I was like, ah, eh, source is kind of sketchy. We'll see if it pans out. But those lines were actually in the matrix resurrections. So the moral of the story is, you know, I'm going to go up my gut. If I see something from a less reputable source, but it has legs or there's a corroborating source, then I'll talk about it. But if I see something and it's coming from you know, for example, yeah, I don't even want to shout them out. You know what? Forget it. If it comes from a source that I don't trust, you're not going to hear me kicking it back up to you guys unless I think it's going to really turn into something. Um, right. So since we don't really have any actual sources telling us any real information other than what we got last week, I did put up a poll on X asking what you guys thought in terms of because, you know, there was some confusion. Actually, let me just put it on the screen here. Um, because what I did was I took away all the nonsense in the middle that made that run on paragraph sentence so confusing and just stripped it down to the bones. And when you strip it down to the bones, it's very simple. It says, it's not clear who from the matrix universe will return. Simple. You, they don't know anything, which is what I said last time. So, you know, when I asked X, what do you guys think? Uh, the leading winner with 47% was all new characters. So the street seemed to think that uh, we're not going to have Neon Trinity, or if we do, it'll be a reference and that they won't actually be in it. Now, I think personally, a lot of this is probably a result of, well, first of all, I always credit you guys, you know, people who follow this content, who are yellow pillars through and through, who have, you know, not only stumbled to the bottom of the rabbit hole, but have found themselves quite comfortable here. Um, yeah. Shout out to you guys. For those of you, you know, I think a lot of the reason why people might have voted all new characters is because there is an interview somewhere. I'm trying to remember if it, I believe it was Keanu Reeves. I think it's one of the interviews with Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss, but it was built up to Resurrections. And, you know, he said that he'd be willing to do more Matrix as long as uh, oh, Wachowski is directing. Uh, so one of the little pieces of information that we got in the announcement last week is that Drew Goddard is directing and Lana Wachowski is an executive producer. So, you know, if Keanu sticks to his guns or if it was Carrie Ann Moss, I believe it was Keanu that said it, though. I didn't get a chance to dig up the interview. I'm sure that it's on my channel somewhere. But, um, but yeah, he, you know, basically said that, that, you know, he's down as long as the Wachowski is directing. And we know Wachowski isn't directing. So if that holds up, that could be a clue to suggest that Neo and Trinity will not be featured in this installment. Um. And if I was picking right now, not just because of the voting, but if I'm just going off of the energy, I, I think that's probably accurate. I don't think this is going to be, you know, picking up where Resurrections left off. I could be very wrong about that, but I just don't think it's the case. Um, and that's why I added the young Morpheus, the old, you know, that's the oldest rumor, right? That was supposed to be M4. Um, and they're like Scion said, they're doing um, Ready Player 2. And that's Zach Penn's baby. So clearly there's still a relationship there. Clearly everybody's getting money together, right? That's always a good sign. I love getting money with my friends. Um, so, yeah, I think um, if I had to be, you know, put to the test or, you know, if you forced me to make a decision today, you know, I had to give you an answer, 
then I, I, I'm going to go with the pack there in terms of I think there's a better chance that there's all new characters than um, Neo and Trinity and, and picking up where Resurrection left, left off. And also with the young Morpheus thing, um, you know, in the article, it did say that what Drew Goddard uh, approached them with the idea. So that would suggest that he's not approaching them to do the young Morpheus script. Right. Um, but I wouldn't rule it out completely because, you know, uh, not too long, or I guess, what, maybe right before Resurrections came out was when Zach Penn said that, you know, his script was still very much in play, quote. Um, and at the same time, there was never any full confirmation that he wrote a young Morpheus script. It just, uh, there was circumstantial evidence. And, you know, there was the Michael B. Jordan rumor thing. So well, if you connect it to it was not a prequel. No, this is what I'm saying. He was talking in circles. All he all he said was that what he was doing wasn't going to mess up anything that we saw in universe and that he was also a fan of the Animatrix and he wouldn't do anything to disrespect that. And that's what I'm saying. So a young Morpheus script fit that because that doesn't change anything in the second Renaissance. But yeah, it was definitely worded in a way that you could, you know, play with the interpretation. Uh, shout out to Jimmy. Shout out to Temet. I see you. Know thyself. Uh, right. So that was another thing, too. Uh, right. Shout out to uh, Celio. <laughs> I feel you, but I just I wouldn't bet on that. I would not bet on that right now. Um, but yeah, I do like a lot. You guys know I got a lot of favorites in the cast of um Resurrections. I thought it was cast well, and um, there were some good performances in there and some really good actors. But um, right, Randy, I was gonna say, um, you know, one of the reasons one of the things I like about Randy is his energy, um, you know, towards you know, being positive and, you know, he's one of the people I think put the most willpower into wishing for a Matrix 5 coming sooner than later. Um, but yeah, with that said, it's like, um, I feel like most of the feedback or most of the energy that I got between the last week, uh, you know, when the news was announced. So, right. So the news, when the news was announced and, you know, my phone was blowing up. Right. And the general consensus like the most feedback I got, I guess, was visible confusion. <laughs> you know, like I don't even want to say surprise. Like people were like, huh? Like, and you know, and then you know, it's me. So people know me as like the Matrix guy, right? So uh, people are looking at me confused, like, well, okay, you're the Matrix dude. So what's going on? I said, like, I don't know. It's news to me. It nobody saw this coming. Um, and then like the next wave, like the following wave after the visible confusion was just kind of like, oh my God, who's doing this? Why are they doing this? Why are they doing this now? I don't want to see this. Um, so I got a lot of that, um, which is cool. Like you're entitled to your opinion. Um, and the funny part is, cause you know, we went live, what, when do we go live Easter Sunday, right? The 25th anniversary. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure in that live stream, I'm pretty sure I said, yeah, now's probably not a good time. <laughs> if we keeping it all the way a thousand, right? Because uh, the traffic is just low. And then, like I said, and then when you do talk to people, they're like, ah, uh, I didn't like resurrection resurrections. Ah, uh, yeah, this is done. So um, so yeah, timing wise, it's a little odd. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to, you know, put it out there because you know, clearly I'm getting a lot of that feedback. So I just want to put it out there to run, to remind people, I liked Resurrections. <laughs> like, I get it that most people did not, and that's fine. I liked it. I had a great time on the way building up to it, and then when I sat down and watched it, I enjoyed it. Um, so that said, and we should probably play a game, because with us freestyling this and me not like having any notes or we didn't do a whole lot of prep work you you guys we should play like a drinking game every time i say that said you guys got to do a shot um because you know i'm just freestyling and we're just gonna make up transitions here so all that 
Um, but yeah. I'll, I'll buzz in. I was doing some upper body strength workout and making small talk with my physical therapist and asked her if she had any April Fools that she fell for. And she said no and asked me back. I said no because it was a couple days later we got the announcement for Matrix 5. And if it had been a little bit, bit earlier, we might have thought it was April Fools. Mm -hmm. And uh, she asked me about what I thought about if I was looking forward to Matrix 5. And I said, yeah. And, of course, you know, that kind of like spontaneous situation, you find yourself talking about something that you really enjoy. And you're going to find out how you really feel because you're put on the spot. And uh, she asked, what she asked was, are Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss going to be in it? And I said, we don't know yet. We could, but the last time we saw Neo and Trinity, they were hand in hand flying off together into the sunset. So why not just let them have their honeymoon, let them go and hand over the, the job of saving the world to a new crew, a new ship, and let's get to know them. Let's meet them, get to know them and see what they can do. So, so I like this ship. I like the Memnazine, the hybrid design, and I, and I love this crew. I want to know more about every single one of them. We, I mean, really in Resurrections, we just got teased with these characters. There wasn't enough time for in depth. They went to kind of a heist movie, kind of like a you know Ocean's Eleven kind of style there for the third act of the movie. So, so we just got more of an overview of the roles of these characters in that in the heist. <laughs> we we're gonna get we we're gonna the heist is to get Trinity out. Uh, so now. Bring back this cast. Bring back this crew. Show us how they're going to take over and let Neo and Trinity fly off into the sunset. Give, let them have their happy ending. Well, and you say that, and, um, you know, what it made me think of is just kind of, because you're talking about, you know, liking the new characters. If anybody's been paying attention to any of the fan fiction I've done since Resurrections, you should know that I like, you know, some of the characters. Um, but where I was going was the dark fate thing. Like what, what you said reminded me of the dark fate thing. Like, because um, coming off of Genesis, another film that most people did not like that I at least liked where I thought they were going to go with it. And then it got sold from Skydance to whoever else, making them like the eighth studio to own a piece of that franchise. Um, right. Yeah. Like if you watch a Terminator movie, like check out how many different graphics are in the beginning <laughs> now it's insane it's like 10 minutes of movie studios but um right so when they sold it from skydance and then did dark fate it was like okay start over so they completely didn't pick up the cliffhanger in fact they just ignored it altogether or at least they said they were going to ignore it altogether and then when they hyped up dark fate as you know the t3 we never got it's going to pick up where t2 left off all they did was combine all the sequels after T2, you know, T3, T4, Genesis, and repackages a Dark Fate with a bunch of crowbar nonsense in it that it didn't need. And like all this stuff that I really didn't like. Now, I'm saying that because even though I didn't like it, and if you ask me about it, I'll give you my honest opinion on it. I also wasn't going to like, terminator comment sections and like writing paragraphs about how i hated it right so i'm trying to say you know don't like if you're gonna do this do it don't hate watch like what's the point you know what i'm saying like that's my point like if you're done then be done if you're down for the ride be down for the ride because that's the thing i think that a lot of people um don't understand about my particular excitement with this news i'm more excited for the community having some energy because <laughs> i mean it was on dialysis right um <laughs> you know what i'm saying like I, it was just like who's who's gonna pull the plug you know um whereas now you know there's a little bit of juice and to me that's positive um so if the movie is trash the movie's trash like i'm i'm not saying i want it to be trash i'm just saying if it is I'm prepared for that. And that's the thing. I think one of the things that happened last time is people had their own individual expectations of what the film was going to be. So then when it wasn't that for everybody, 
that's when you know the rejection comes in and it's oh i hate this da, da, da. i didn't do this they didn't do this they didn't do this so don't do that don't have all these expectations this time like i said if you're gonna ride with it ride with it see what they do and if it's whack say it's whack and move on um because like i said that's the crazy part that is the crazy part like when we were in brooklyn at the um at the party v what i said i said we come with the franchise that's right you don't have to like built it built in we come with exactly we built in we come with this thing so if anything you know like that's the like for me i'm excited because of the other side of the coin being you know like i was saying on easter in my head there were all these things that i was planning to do and i was like okay you know i later on i can connect this later on i can connect that and then i realized wait a minute what later on i can just start connecting stuff now um so when they add more to the official universe that gives me like even more motivation to open up the world even more because that's what i've been saying this whole time this franchise is built to explore and to be opened up and to science point we can follow these new characters we can learn more about these characters that they introduced us to um but if that's not it and if it's all new characters that we've never seen before that's probably honestly with the climate that's probably the best thing right now because if you screw with neon trinity and mess up there's no coming back like this it's already bad enough like if you destroyed neon trinity's legacy you understand what i'm saying like that's blasphemy like nobody's gonna feel you on that and nobody's gonna forgive you for that and if we're talking about forgiveness See, this is this is we're going back to the thumbnail. We're going <laughs> we going back to the thumbnail. If we talking about forgiveness, you know, I mean, we got we 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 got some amends need made, you know. Um I'm I'm still looking at these NFTs like what's going on? What's next? Where they at? Where where's Moonpay at? Right? That's who bought nifties, right? Oh yeah, that's something I don't know that I've ever actually said on live here. Um as far as I know. And that we might have taken care of that when the um you know what what was that the nifty's uh tombstone live stream um but that might not it might not have happened yet but i believe and you know someone from the uh from the uh matrix fight club discord can correct me if i'm wrong but i believe that moon pay bought nifty's when nifty's ran out of money so they're on life support somewhere hidden um but yeah you know with the news of a matrix five that's that's what i said on twitter I, i'd love to be able to find it let me see if i can find that but yeah like i said cyberdyne is is all up in the in the grizzly bear cave right now i'm, I'm gonna just say that okay and that's another thing because i um i have been saying this before please like the stream while you guys are here um but on the matrix university discord i can speak freely i don't know if you guys have noticed but you know in the past few live streams i've been more reserved and very selective about the things i choose to say on youtube there is uh specific reasons for that but at the matrix university discord feel free to ask questions i can answer them freely there um so uh Temet says, I will say this Matrix film will feel a lot more free in the way the first film felt they need to bring back the fear of the Matrix. The Matrix is a character in itself. Thank you. Yo, that's actually a great comment. Underrated comment right there. Yes, man. That is the energy. The Matrix itself is a character in the sense that that's what I love about the Animatrix, right? That they gave the matrix as a concept to these people that they already respected in the animation world in the anime world and then just let them run and it came out great we can do more of that and that's not to you know obviously i'm a fan of what the wachowskis have done they built this universe like without them none of that other stuff happens all of it is good to me and that's the thing it's not it doesn't have to be one or the other non-linear we can do both. We have the intelligence and the technology to do both. And um, so, yeah, that was another thing I was saying about the um, this tweet here and the um, the voting, you know, the, the all new characters uh, winning there. Um, you know, I, I've always respected 
you guys as an audience or, or specifically respected your intelligence as an audience um you know uh i definitely feel like the people who have made it here and who engage with this content you know this content ain't for everybody it's definitely you know i've come to accept that you know what do, what do they say um the truth is boring you know um so you know that's what we're about here we're about telling the truth and keeping it real and, and and getting to the bottom of the source and yeah that can be hard work that can be boring work that can be not as entertaining as the rumor or the theory right but um hey so but, i noticed something with your poll just now yeah yeah there's somebody missing who's that sati oh she's an m forecast yeah but now i'm thinking and yeah you're right but i'm thinking um you know sati was kind of built up in revolutions to be like this very big character and then you know we got a little bit of it in the matrix online and then she um she did appear in matrix four but it wasn't as impactful of a uh, of a role as i thought but if she is supposed to be built up if she's supposed to be the oracle's successor or um the the next one that's going to reunite humans and machines she needs a bigger role she needs a bigger mission yeah no i definitely felt like they did not lean into that as much as i expected in resurrections i thought i mean they leaned they did they definitely leaned into it but not a whole lot they leaned excuse me they leaned more into you know who her father was than her being mm -hmm. the oracle's protege which i thought was cool but to your point Yes, yeah, Sat Sat Sati is a powerful program, and she is powerful because she was not written by the Matrix itself, um, which Beyond the Glitch plays with a little bit there. Um, <laughs> yeah, man, we got some right. So at some point, this might this might have to be a Matrix University thing, because that's that's what I did tease a little bit here. Is at some point. Um, I think you guys are really going to like how everything comes together um, when you're talking about, you know, beyond the glitch, agent syndicate, simulation theory, all that stuff. Um, so, right. So if you're here for the M5 hype train and also considering we don't have a release date yet, um, I've seen, you know, 2026 seems to be the going assumption, but it is just that an assumption. Um so yeah, if you're looking to soak up some Matrix content, you might want to catch up on all the fan fiction I've been putting out here. Um, you know, Matrix University collaborations, there have definitely been a bunch of people uh, on the Discord contributing, which always makes it even better and makes the execution happen so much faster. Um, but yeah, it's cool to, you know, make content for Matrix fans, by Matrix fans. And um, yeah, like I said, you guys, if you guys uh, are looking to soak up some Matrix content, you might want to start playing catch up because the dots are starting to connect and I don't want anybody to get left behind. But uh, that is a thing that we do here. We, you know, sneak in Easter eggs and put in all types of connections in the spirit of the matrix universe and right jimmy uh 1000 i, I got your comment up here because i didn't want to forget it because i think it's actually a really cool concept i don't see people talk about this a whole lot you know most people talk about the story either going to you know just post resurrections with neo and trinity or you know prequel space with young morpheus or uh you know that purge era where the agent syndicate lives you know in between revolutions and resurrections which you know, we know as the uh, the original Matrix Four, right, V? <laughs> That's right. Um, right, but for those uh, who didn't uh, participate in the Matrix Online, uh, it's just the era between Revolutions and Resurrections. But yeah, uh, Jimmy here says uh, maybe a sequel with new characters who would have no knowledge of Neo and Trinity, maybe a hundred years after their death. So that's you know shooting, you know, back to the future, far into the future, which is a direction on the timeline. That could be really, really interesting. Um, I found it uh, interesting that nothing in Resurrections directly contradicts anything that we played or experienced in the Matrix Online. Uh, and some things might be said to allude to events. I mean, 
Morpheus is dead and he died in both. Obviously, that's a that's a direct connection. The details may be a little off, but it was nice that nothing was like directly contradicted for, from our experience. And I hope they continue that and don't, you know, they don't have to acknowledge the events of the Matrix Online, but I hope they don't uh, also make it so they can't be canon because that obviously that world meant a lot to us. Now I want to address someone in chat. Tell me in those cases. Why can't I find the poster of Neo holding the machine gun from Resurrections? And yeah, I, I, I want to know if this is a real poster that I don't have, a, you know, an image of, or if it's kind of a Mandela effect thing where it's kind of remembering. Because there, there are uh, seven spectral posters, one for each character, and then there's Sati as well, and her spectrum is kind of all over the place. So is that the posters that Temet Noske is uh, is talking about? Uh, and if if you bring in my media PC on the stream, I'll put these up. I'll, I'll put these in the stream. Well, I was gonna say, you know, come when you're talking Resurrections era, it could have been a fan fiction poster, man. Like, no, this is these are the official, the official. No, uh, you're you're gonna show us the official, right? But oh. I'm saying he might, Temet might be asking about a fan fiction poster. Somebody might have flipped an official one. I don't know. I don't know which image you guys are talking about. So, well, if you jump over the stream and add my account, we start uh, OBS. Well, I I sent and, you the link, right? Yeah, it's coming up. Okay. Um, so, right. So, uh, Nagano says Hugo Weaving needs to return. Now, this is actually a good comment because I did want to bring this up. And this is why I love talking to you guys because you guys can, I guess, the source is strong and Nagano, he could just feel it. Um, but yeah, with the Hugo Weaving thing, I think that's an important talking point because if you guys remember, Lana had him written in to the original Resurrection script, but because of a scheduling conflict and then the pandemic, they never got Hugo Weaving scheduled to line up exactly. And then Lana was just kind of like, all right, well, we're just we kind of worked around it kind of thing. So, you know, at one point, I guess Hugo Weaving had gotten his schedule to work with their new shooting schedule. But by then they had already, you know, um, written him out so um and you know the wachowskis and hugo weaving have a good relationship as, as he mentioned he's been in so many of their films that he was like yeah it's a bummer to not be there but at the same time he was like i want to give other people a chance to get on screen um so that was pretty cool of him you know to be cool about it and you know obviously no bad blood or hard feelings but because it didn't really work out last time it would not surprise me if he's in this at all. Um, you know, and I think uh, Agent Groff got a bad rap. You know, those were big shoes to fill. But uh, I did like what Agent Groff brought to it. I thought he brought an element of almost like it was almost like he was cosplaying as Agent Smith, which I thought worked out really well. Um, I'm going to actually make this the, the main screen if I can. Well, let me do that. Which the wallpaper on that monitor brings up another thing that with the, with the director, new director for Matrix 5, uh, known for some uh, edgy or some horror movies, body horror stuff, did the Cabin in the Woods series, did Cloverfield. Okay, and I have seen Cloverfield, but since you bring it up, I got to say this out loud because I'm not familiar with his work like that. What I saw what was the one, I saw one film on his IMDb, and I liked it. You know, you said Cloverfield and Cloverfield wasn't like what I'm about to go into. But I did hear the horror thing. And I think I might have heard the zombie thing. And where I'm going with this is on Netflix, I feel like there was like a wave maybe like two years ago where it felt like they were just like trying to force feed me this like CGI horror gore kind of sci-fi stuff. And I was like, I just I'm not interested in it at all like but i don't I, care i don't want to see really it not I don't like body it. horror and horror yeah. is not my genre but see the, what i'm just a, a bit surprised about is since matrix 5 was announced and this new director buzz online people are like oh well maybe they'll bring body horror into the matrix franchise the matrix universe and my reaction was when when wasn't it there uh, okay we saw, we, gotcha. uh, we saw the we gotcha. saw the little bug crawl into thomas anderson's navel we saw trinity 
yank the bloody thing out and throw it out the window of the car. We saw Mia wake up in a pot of goo and get flushed down into the, into the sewer. You know, there and his body was all emaciated and bald and, and you know, and muscles deteriorated. So there was a lot of different episodes of uh, body horror in, in the three films. And, but no, and without, those, those... they didn't overdo it. It was just right. stuff. It's tactful. It was well done, practical effects. So, uh, but I'm, I think my point is, I think we'll see body horror, more body horror in The Matrix 5. And like, he, well, like you said, those are all great examples. But like you said, they didn't overdo it. So that's my thing. If the thing is going to go in the wrong direction, yeah, I'm not going to, you're going to hear me complain about that. Um, now, now, again, I'm not, because ex- you got to justify it, right? And that's the thing. That was the other thing that I, other problem I had with like a lot of the stuff that I felt like Netflix was forced for me. Because what was the other one? Um, what was it? Love, death, robots, love, death and robots, or death, sex. love, robots, something like the love, sex, death, love, robots, sex robots, whatever it was. You know what I'm talking about? They had the one Michael B. Jordan episode, which was really good. Like, I felt like the series was very hit or miss. You know, they're like shorts. It was almost very animatrixy energy. Um, yeah. But yeah, there was a couple of those where it was like, all right, what's that? You know, like, it, like to me, if it's like, if you're just going to show me this weird thing that looks gory, it's not justified. It's just you just want to show me this disgusting thing. To me, that's just shock value. And I don't respect that. It's just, I I don't know. I'm just not wired to enjoy that. So, right. Know, it was in service to the story in The Matrix. Right. It served to illustrate just these strange things happening to thomas anderson and just the stark contrast of the world of the matrix and the and the real world so it's and i'm not creeped out by any of it i'm not creeped out by any of it great yeah so no um all right so on these posters are these the posters that temet noske was talking about i I refer to these as the spectrum which that's a reference to one of the gangs in mxo as well but uh if you'll notice here we have agent smith in blue yeah, uh, we have Lexi in purple, looking absolutely amazing. And Sati is all over the place. Her waveform's really chaotic, and it's got a lot of different uh, areas of the spectrum going on, as you might expect for her character. And there's eight of these, uh, so we've got like seven colors of the spectrum, and then Sati, which I thought was a nice touch for whoever designed these posters. And we've got the uh, the analyst here uh, in red. Kind of ironic. You might expect him more in blue, especially with his glasses and peddling blue pills. Uh, but that's uh, also like the red is always represented the, the evil, the evil machines. Uh, I love Boggs. I think she's great. I really liked her. I you know, wanted more for her in the movie, although I felt like she she was a presence in the movie. You couldn't, couldn't have had resurrections without her. And she was yeah. the first witness. She was the first witness. So is this what Tamanoske is talking about? Because here's no, no. Randy Ran- has got the machine gun, not Neo. Randy said he sent it to me in DM. So you know it's Instagram. Right. So I got to figure out how to pull that down. But uh, what I was gonna say is real quick here. Uh, Beverly, shout out to Beverly. Hi, Beverly. Um, she said she saw where Carrie Ann Moss will be tied up and possibly not be in it. So you know, um, I don't know where the. I think they finished shooting the acolyte. But, you know, she got other stuff lined up. I don't know what the shooting schedule for this is. Um, and again, I don't even know that Neo and Trinity are written in this. Uh, but thanks for sharing that, Beverly. That could be, you know, that could prove to be legit intel there. Yeah, Trinity's a Jedi now. How about that? Right. Um, so, yeah, I don't know, um, you know, if they plan on doing a season two, you know. Um, um, but, yeah, let me see if I can find... The image that Randy sent me. And if Trinity or Carrie Ann Moss is not playing a Jedi in the Star Wars, don't hate on me in the comments. I'm not following the, the Star Wars spinoffs. So but I think it's interesting. Force powers, source powers. So just to finish off the spectrum, uh, Neo got like a nice a turquoise blue, and uh, Trinity in green, like her bike. So 
it's one one thing you know i saw these posters before uh, i saw the movie and i tried to stay away from anything spoilery the only thing i watched was the trailer for the movie and uh i enjoyed it i think it has memorable moments it, it's not entirely for forgettable i especially like when Niobe explains why Neo almost died uh, when they unplugged him this time, because he was addicted to all the shit the Matrix had been pumping into his brain for so long. So, uh, I, I think that's, uh, we get screen addicted. And that was another thing they couldn't really show, like an online addiction back in 1999 to 2003, not in a way that would have really made it poignant. They maybe they had like the cubicle farm in the first movie, showing all these people stacked like wood, all plugged in. Uh, you know, an allegory for the power plants in the real world. But cell phones were new, and uh, wow, well, it's kind of a gee whiz still back then. And the cell phone was a symbol of uh, we're gonna how we're gonna get Thomas Anderson out. It was a symbol of this new new technology that represented freedom. You're no longer tied to your cubicle. You pick up this, this cell phone and go. But then by the time WP demanded that this movie be made, we do have these screen addictions and they were able to show it in the movie in an amazing way where Thomas Anderson is walking around uh, the Dave Sachs offices and he's the only one who doesn't have a screening everyone around him has a screen in his hand and they were they show the downward camera shot in the elevator and looking up at the mirrored ceiling and i i thought that's like this this is some really amazing imagery that is also ironic it's like it's like oh we warned you back in 1999 about the dangers of addictions to technology and letting it, you know, be an illusion, letting the corporation feed you this illusion instead of living your life. And now that that's happened and everyone is addicted to the screen and plugged into whatever the corporation is, is pumping in, into their brain, now you want us to tell you that all over again? <laughs> and, and that's what she did. She really did. She, she said, okay, big corporate media is still bad. So uh, real quick here, Cheo says, hey, fellow red, blue, and yellow pills. Uh, don't forget the green pill. Uh, just a listener from Nicaragua. Love the content and in-depth knowledge and lore you keep alive for the Matrix universe. Just like you, all the universe changed me. Oh, thank you for your kind words. Thank you for tuning in, and thank you for taking – I mean, you got a whole cocktail. You got red, blue, and yellow pills. I wonder what that tastes like. Um but yeah, man, um, thanks for sharing the positive energy, the positive feedback. Um, it's always been a pleasure being here with all of you, sharing that passion for the Matrix universe. Um, you know, that's what makes this whole ride fun is hanging out with each other. Um, right. I was going to say here, uh, Nagano said Agent Smith and Elrond from Lord of the Rings are unique. Unique characters from Hugo. It is hard to replace a character you have been connected with. Uh, that's a good point. Um, Temet says he has the machine gun Morpheus, but Neo is holding it on his right hand, turning in a way like he's about to shoot. His coat is almost fully open. So right. So the um. So Randy, Randy, you sent me a reel in DM. So I'm not going to be able to put that up on the screen. And I, I, I don't even know. That might have kicked the Instagram live off. I'm not sure, but I'm tired of fighting with Instagram tonight. So, um, right. So um, artif <laughs> artificial intelligence has already taken power. Yeah, I think um. Oh sweet, Temet said he posted on Discord. Uh, back to Jimmy's comment real quick here. I think for me, that's one of the things that makes the B1 trial so heavy is just the timing. Because if you think about it, like the Wachowskis wrote bits and pieces of information in 1999. Um, so the fact that that argument now, like in the context of AI, and like I said in the last live, like just I had to use AI to make it. It's just there's like a lot of heavy layers there. Uh, it's It's a lot. It's a lot. I'm not mad about it, though. Um, he says, uh, I feel Resurrections is the most misunderstood. It fits the timeline, and it's open. Um, hmm. I mean, a lot of people didn't like it, 
So you might be right in terms of the numbers. Um, but I feel like revolutions might actually be the most misunderstood. That's actually a good debate. Thoughts, guys? Do you have any feed? Do you have any thoughts on that comment? That's an interesting comment. Interesting take. Well, I, w I will say that leading up to part four and the release, the, the original sequels got a lot of love. So I think that they aged well. And that was another topic that was brought up on Reddit this past week was, you know, w what are your thoughts on the original sequels? Did they age well? And I think that they definitely did. And uh, I pointed that out during the buildup. And I think, you know, part four, it, it's it's growing on me because I didn't particularly enjoy it, but now I, I, I find myself just thinking about the scenes that uh, I did connect with and uh, enjoying those in hindsight more now. And, you know, as, as we get part five, you know, it might tie in and, you know, might flesh out and make, make a little bit more sense. So, you know, the, there's like a dwell time for it. <laughs> um, what was your question? Because I feel like I'm just kind of <laughs> riffing. <laughs> um, he said, "What he, I had it on the screen here. He said something about, oh, right. He said that um, Resurrections was the most misunderstood of all the sequels or all the Matrix movies. Um, I think I think now I could agree with that statement because um, I still I still misunderstand it a little bit. I I I definitely give a lot of credit to Lana Wachowski, and it's not that it wasn't an enjoyable movie. It's uh, I'm still in that phase where, well, I have faith in the product. I think I just haven't come around to it. But uh, I'm honest about my feelings. I, I didn't love it. And uh, I still keep an open mind. Yeah, I think... Um, oh, great picture choice there, Cyan. Um, I think that... Uh, you know, there's still something in Resurrections. In fact, uh, someone mentioned this to me on the Matrix University Discord or something related to this. And I went into this. And I've mentioned it on the channel before, but... You know, in the original Matrix trilogy, there's all these references to philosophers and thought experiments and theology and these religious references and not just one religion, but, you know, across the board, right? And I was familiar with that stuff. You know, I took, uh, you know, 100 level philosophy in college. Um, you know, I grew up in a, you know, home with uh, a praying grandmother, you know, so those references, you know, in the original trilogy, you know, they jumped out at me, you know, they stuck out like a sore thumb, right? You know, um, Michael Carl Popper, like, you know what I'm saying? Like that, that wasn't like this hidden thing to me, you know? Um, whereas in Resurrections, there's like, it seems like there's all these psychology references and that stuff I'm not as familiar with. So I think that there are some psychology references that may have replaced that space in terms of like the philosophy references that we're used to. And I do feel like there might have been, I don't want to say an Easter egg, but there might be some things there that I'm missing from the experience when you're talking about resurrections. So in that regard, it is possible that I misunderstand it a little bit um, or that there were some things that I just, you know, didn't have the knowledge to pick up on. Um, but that said, uh, you know, when you're talking about, you know, being misunderstood, I think the reason why I think it's a good debate is because I think revolutions is by design made for the audience to participate. And I think most people didn't like it because most people didn't participate. Um so, yeah, so, you know, I don't have the stats. I don't have the pure numbers. I can't really sit here and say which crowd misunderstood more, you know, uh, which movie did more people not get, um, so to speak. Because that's the thing. I feel like Revolutions is more open-ended, like, in the sense that the stuff that we don't get, you're supposed to answer for yourself. 
Um, so yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> I don't know that I have an answer other than my gut would lean towards revolutions. Um, cause to me, I guess, cause you said misunderstood and I don't think people tried to understand resurrections. <laughs> You know, I think people tried to understand revolutions and got frustrated with resurrections. I don't even think people put in the effort. And, you know, th there was a lot of unanswered questions and they continued to go unanswered through revolutions. You know, a, a lot of people just want to go and be entertained. So, you know. Right. And no, and I have that problem with this channel. Maybe it wasn't it. for them. No, and that's, like I said, that that's what I was yeah. saying earlier. I have that problem with the channel. Like, if 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 you're just coming to the channel purely for kung fu entertainment, I'm gonna disappoint you. You know, I get that. But you know, if you came here to find some answers or find the truth, or, or even better, you know, if you're looking for ways to exercise your mind so that you can find your own answers, then this is probably the right place for you. Um, but we have hit the one hour mark, so um. If I didn't accidentally kick Instagram, that's probably going to shut off soon by itself. Anyway, um, I guess I should show, should I show the Andrew interview again? Um, so last live stream, I played a clip. It's the first minute of an interview with Andrew Lewis Caldwell, um, who played Jude in the Matrix Resurrections, and he also played himself or voiced the character in simulation theory, however you want to word that. Um, but yeah, so uh, the whole interview is six minutes, but I'm not playing that on YouTube. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to play it on Matrix University live right after this. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing Hunter's not around. It's probably late for him. Um, but anyway, yeah, he wanted to ask a question uh, after the interview so uh I'll, I'll i'll buzz him on discord see if he's around but yeah so after this uh, after we shut this down i'm gonna hop over to matrix university and show the full interview right there he is um so yeah let me um cue this up real quick here and then um like i said if you were here last week it's the same first minute of the interview but like i said i'm gonna play the whole interview on matrix university discord tonight because i thought he dropped a couple of gems um that are good for actors of course you know when i recorded this nobody knew that there was a matrix 5 coming so that makes it even more interesting i suppose what's up oh, here we go let me get this going here What's up? My name is Andrew Lewis Caldwell. I play Jude in the latest installment of the Matrix franchise. And welcome to the bottom of the <clears throat> rabbit hole. I'm here because I have developed a pretty cool relationship with, with uh, Laz. And we've uh, talked a lot about some of the stuff he's working on. He's, he, he has an awesome understanding of this world that was created by the Wachowskis. And, and it's super cool that he finds Jude to be such an interesting character and a uh, jumping point for some of the stuff he's done. How the world aligns is a pretty crazy thing. I mean, this sort of started just as a conversation with two guys on social media, but here I am in uh, Western New York running an acting studio where I'm teaching local artists how to amplify their skills and take things to the next level. And it just so happens my boy here was coming to Buffalo and we were able to sort of link up for the first time face to face and talk more about this project. It's pretty cool, man, because I got all these great actors and all these great people and these students that are passionate and driven and really want to get involved. And then I got this dude that I'm working with on the side for these fun little projects. It's looking for cool voiceover artists and interesting people. And what an awesome way to collaborate. You know, somebody who is so wrapped up in the Matrix universe and loves it and understands it so well. And somebody who was put in the Matrix universe, finding each other and creating things together. It's awesome. I mean, it's the perfect sort of uh, uh, lay of the cards, if you will. What's up? My name is yeah, no, I, I love the lay of the cards uh, line there. Uh, he wasn't kidding. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. When he said that, neither one of us knew that M5 was coming, though. Like, we're over here cooking right now. It smells so good in the kitchen. I mean, it's like it's like Wednesday before Thanksgiving right now. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> I can't wait to share uh, some of the stuff that we're working on right now. Um but yeah, so so that happened. Um, and uh, 
I don't know. It's a lot has been happening these past couple of weeks, not just for me as a person, but just the world in general. Like we got earthquakes, we got solar eclipses, like yeah, the Matrix working overtime. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody needs to holler at Priyanka <laughs> Chopra, tell her to chill. Um so yeah, interesting, interesting, interesting. Um, yeah, thank you. No, thank you, Temet, because like your support, like the type, your flavor of support is one of the reasons why my ass drove to Buffalo, man. Like that, y- you guys don't understand. Like that, that's the energy that really fuels me. I'm real big on energy, and you know, when I know that you guys are paying attention and watching and staying tuned, that just drives me to make more and want to make more and keep this thing going. Um yeah, so Beverly, um I don't think I don't think you've I don't think I've seen you over at Matrix University Discord, but yeah, I'm going to play the whole interview over there right after this in a few minutes here. Um I wanted to address everybody's comments here real quick before we uh, end the session. Um Cheo says the scene where Neo comes back for Trin is the equivalent of the TV room with the architect. Interesting. Um, Jimmy said the resurrection battle scenes are disappointing, disappointingly less impressive than in the trilogy. And, you know, I will say that, um, you know, I, I've always said that about resurrections. There was definitely a noticeable lack of Wu Ping. Um, and you know, if you came for the Kung Fu, I get that. I mean, like V, I know you're, you know, real big into mixed martial arts. And when you kind of told me, you know, how you felt about the fight choreography compared to the original, sequels you know or the original trilogy i couldn't you know i couldn't defend it you know what i mean like i could it's like yeah you're right <laughs> you know it ain't the same um you know it was more it felt more like born supremacy than crouching tiger hidden dragon you know but um but yeah um right and if you came for the music i i definitely understood the you know the lack of uh don davis right but um but yeah, you know, while it wasn't as good as the original in those respects, it didn't ruin it for me personally, but those are legit criticisms. And that's the thing, man. Look, man, I'm all about constructive criticism. You know, it's one thing to say that wasn't as good or this could be better or this should be better. Um, you know, if if that's the case, then that's the case. Like, and you know, everybody's entitled to their opinion. You might agree or disagree or whatever, whatever. But um, like I said, like for me, that or those elements didn't completely ruin it for me. It's like, <laughs> um, what's his name? Um, Christian Bale in Terminator Salvation didn't completely ruin it for me. Um, but he definitely completely ruined Batman for me. Um, <laughs> you know, it's just what it is. Like, <laughs> uh when Neo is trapped in the mobile lab station. That's actually one of my uh, not only favorite scenes in Revolutions, but that that's actually one of my favorite videos on this channel is the train man and mobile lab and talking about that. I felt like that the information for that video really came together. And at least at the time, I mean, I don't know what has been said on these internets since, but at the time, I know that that perspective was very unique and no one was talking about it like that then. Um, and that's always kind of fun for me too is um you know talking about certain aspects of the franchise or shining lights on different um areas that people might not have considered um that's always kind of like been a fun thing for me and i think that's one of the things that i really enjoyed about uh the most recent b1 trial because i feel like you know first of all how many people really read the matrix comics like let's be real like I mean, we can roll it back. How many people have really seen the anime Matrix? You know what I'm saying? Like when I when I when I started doing Matrix content in 2019, you know that was a thing. I would post anime Matrix pictures on Twitter, and people were like, "What's that?" I was like, "You don't know what the anime Matrix is? Where you been?" Um, you know, now now that's not as bad. Like since Resurrections, I feel like a lot of people caught up on the anime Matrix stuff a little bit. Um, but yeah, the comics is real deep in the weeds. So you know, I felt like, you know, when Scion when Scion Dessa for clarity <laughs> when Cyan Dasa sent me um, the the first draft of the script um, you know I felt like um, okay this is cool you know I'm like really I, I, I always like the Animatrix I always like the, the B1 story 
um, the comics, um, you know, and I'm digging into the script and then I realized like, right, you know, cause I could tell like the script, the, the first draft of the script, you know, it's based, it was written through the lens of the original web comic or the first printed version, but in the 20th anniversary edition, there's more information. It's still bits and pieces of information, but the entire closing argument is in the 20th anniversary. It's not in the original web comic. So that's when, you know, that energy that I was describing before where like, then I just feel obligated to like show more fans, more stuff than they knew was there. So I know if a lot of people didn't read the original comic, a lot of people damn sure didn't read the 20th anniversary edition. So that's why I was like, all right, let me stick to the source material as much as I can. And then, you know, I merged in um, Cyan Das's dialogue for the um, the judge and the prosecutor. And um, that is the one thing I did write. I did write the um, the Leyland commercial. So um, that one I did write that. But um, but yeah, man, it just kind of all came together and the teamwork aspect of it. And, you know, Comical Realm did the 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 3D modeling of B1 because the AI was not giving that one up. And uh yeah, no, like shining the light on that. You know, because I feel like it, it's actually like really heavy. I mean the second Renaissance is really heavy. Do you know how many people tell me <laughs> that they have not that they had nightmares because they watched that thing? And I'm like, how old were you? They always say they were like teens or a kid. And it's like, well there you go. I didn't like bother like we were talking about the gore. I mean it's animation, but like none of none of that affected me. I never had nightmares because I saw the animatrix. Um, but I also saw it as an adult. Um, so I'm not poking fun at you guys. You guys probably should have been watching it at 12 years old at night. But um. <laughs> yeah, but I remember watching it and being like a little jarred. I never had bad dreams about it, but I remember being jarred. I was like, oh, this is like um Oh, it, it like it just really hit, it just connected. Oh, it absolutely hit, but I'm not gonna lie, like I loved every second of it because Yeah, well that's like the I said, man machine war that <laughs> right. Terminator fans wanted. Yep. Not only that, but we I'm glad you brought up the Terminator reference because that's one of the things I loved about it. You know, it seemed like usually when we're talking about uh AI and you know, these scenarios, right? It's always the hive mind, right? You know, and that was one of the the lines that I loved in Terminator Genesis. Uh, Skynet says to, I think, Kyle Reese, he's like, you know, you didn't kill, um, you didn't defeat me, you defeated an army of slaves. Like, I am Skynet. Like, I'm Skynet. Like, you know, a T-800 ain't me. That's a, That's just... You know, an avatar. There's plenty. I got an army of them. You know, um, so with the second renaissance, now you see, oh wait, it's not just the machines are bad and people are good. In fact, it's way deeper than that. And you get and that's the thing. That's why I tell people to watch the second renaissance and the animatrix before reloaded. Cause I feel like it prepares you for the architect scene subconsciously. But since I saw the architect scene first. That's why I guess I didn't feel that that jarring because it actually made the architect scene come together for me. It was like, oh, okay. Now I get it. And that's when I really like understood the the whole um and I've talked about this in videos, but just the whole prison industrial complex a aspect of the machine's choice. You know, it's not necessarily that they have to keep us alive for their own survival i mean they can use other methods of um gathering energy right i mean the architect says their level of survival we're prepared to accept like we don't need you to survive but again that prison industrial complex is the it's almost like the punishment right it's almost like revenge you know um but also mercy at the same time like we could just extinct your whole race but we're not going to do that we're going to let this symbiotic thing rock so that way you're still here and we don't have to feel guilty about wiping out your entire species but um yeah man it's deep like just talking about it just saying it <laughs> it's like well it's kind of heavy <laughs> did i lose you guys 
still here. You know, we are my, still here. I lost my broadcast vibes. That's why it got quiet on me because I played the uh, the Andrew interview and uh, didn't put the music back on. But um, but yeah, let's let's get to get over to um Matrix University so I can play the full version of the Andrew Lewis Caldwell interview. Um, maybe somebody will remember to ask Hunter's question for him. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anything that you guys would like to share or are working on or want to say to the class before we end this session I was looking for that screenshot of Neo and Mobile Avenue and uh, I think it was Kevin Noskins talking about that but in the meantime I found the pictures of the party in Brooklyn Brooklyn Zoo yeah. shame on you so, so we'll just send it out with that uh Yo, I'm actually in that picture. If yeah, right, no cap. <laughs> uh, everything I got going on is also corporate. Unfortunately, I guess this we all have to put in our time with the machine. I haven't had uh, time for personal projects much. Uh, you know, struggling to get by in the real world. That is what it is. I'm lucky to have some time to play some games and enjoy myself, but. Thanks for having well, yeah, me. No, I mean, you said you... live stream and we're going to keep it current with the Matrix news. Yeah, no, you said you're working for the machine. So we need we need inside guys, man. We need this got to be an inside job. So, uh, what's his name? Um, Metacortex. Um, so yeah, so yeah, we're gonna wrap this up here. And like I said, there is a link in the description for the Matrix University Discord. If you would like to see the full Andrew Lewis Caldwell interview, I'm gonna stream that. Uh, you know, we gotta close this so it'll give you a couple minutes to you know get the link and get set up over there. Also, for security reasons, you know, it's it's gonna ask you some stuff, uh, you know, verification because we've uh we were under uh, a sex bot attack a few weeks ago so we had to clean that up um knock on wood i think we got that situation under control finally i had to but that like i said i had to change the permission so you know we're on high security right now um the white hallways so yeah so um i'm looking forward to sharing that full interview with you guys please like the stream on the way out i always forget to say the stupid stuff like that but right, even though um, we have no idea when the release date is going to be, um, one of the things I did want to say while I got you guys here is you guys are my eyes and ears um, right now. Um, my schedule, I only have like Tuesday and Wednesday off and not even every Tuesday and Wednesday. So, um, you know, that's why it was so weird and cool at the same time that the news was announced when it was because we could go live and I could make a video and it was like, oh, wow, this is amazing. What are the odds? Um so yeah, so you guys are my eyes and ears. So if you see stuff, if you think it's you know legitimate Matrix Five news, if you can corroborate it, if it's from a reliable source, uh, send it to me, tag me, whatever. Um, you know, uh, I will do my best to keep you guys updated. But yeah, you know, whereas last time, you know, I got to be the first kid on the block with all the news. You know, the landscape's different now. There's other guys sharing Matrix news these days. So um, you know, get it where you can. Uh, share it if you can. You are always appreciated on that front. Uh, the other thing I wanted to uh, mention to you guys while you're all here. Right, dude. So um, <laughs> speak of the devil, right? Cosplay. Um, Clearly, I think we need to have another party when Matrix 5 comes out, right? That's pretty much a given, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, so that's out of the way. Uh, we got time because we don't know when it's going to be, right? So I'm not worried about that. Um, but yeah, uh, if we do, we might do something before that, maybe if the buzz is buzzing. Oh, shout out to Agent Gill. I love these slideshows, by the way. Um, yeah, you guys are going to see some more Agent Gill. I'm telling you, you want to get caught up on all the fan fiction like right now. <laughs> Because there's going to be cameos all over the place, uh, to say the least. Um, 
so all right so i think you know whatever else i could think to say i'm not going to think to say it until i end the broadcast so i'll just have to save it for next time um and on that note see you over at matrix <laughs> university class dismissed candy for all the glitch kitties <laughs> <laughs>